everybody and welcome back to Hammer Time, the third official episode. Took a little break, was doing finals, and I probably, I gotta say, I have my favorite guest so far on the podcast. Might be my favorite guest ever. You guys will see why later. RJ Deuce Abernathy. RJ, how you doing, buddy? What's going on, bro? I'm doing good, bro. How you doing? Oh, you know, living the dream, man. Living the dream out here. I'm in Logan, Utah, currently playing summer ball. RJ, where are you currently at, buddy? Uh, I'm currently in Jackson, Tennessee, just working out for the summer and working. Heck yeah, man. So for those of you that don't know, RJ, were you have you been on the YouTube channel yet? Let's I gotta figure that out. Probably, I don't think you have. Uh, probably one or two videos. Yeah, you might have been on a couple. So you may have seen him on there. If not, he'll get on there. Don't you worry about that. So RJ is from Tampa, Florida, born in Tampa, right? Right. Moved to Tennessee, kind of grew up there. RJ, explain to the people how you ended up at Highlands. Well, I played uh, Juco basketball here in Tennessee at a Juco called Columbia State near Middle Tennessee. And um, coming off my last year, the year I graduated, I dislocated my kneecap. So after that, I lost a couple offers. Things were looking kind of bleak. You know what I'm saying? I was just trying to figure out where I was going to go with my future. And um, from word of mouth, I got a couple calls from people asking if I would be interested in getting back into baseball. So I told them, yeah, I'd definitely be interested in, you know what I'm saying, getting back onto the diamond. And uh, so we exchanged a couple of numbers, and I got to talking with uh, the coach at Highlands, and um, he decided to give me an opportunity to come out there and play baseball again. So you, how long had it been since you'd been on a diamond before this season? See, so um, the last time I played baseball was in 2019, the year I graduated high school. And then I did a third year of JUCO because of our COVID year. So yep. it had been it was a three year period. So RJ, you had had the COVID year, and you know RJ, our relationship, man. As I pull up your stats here from this past season, our relationship was kind of interesting. How it got started, I think you were talking to the coach at Highlands at the time. We won't mention names just because of obviously there's a lot that has gone on since then. Um, mm -hmm. But you know you had trying to find your numbers and they're not showing me on the website, of course there they are. But you know, you were talking to coach, your parents were there. Me and my family had showed up to talk to coach. He introduced us, whatever. I went to Walmart with my family to get supplies and ran into your parents and they had remembered me from talking to coach hunt. And then, you know, I kind of got to, you know, throughout the year, I think you just found me really annoying and decided, I guess I'll start hanging out with this kid because I felt like there was a lot of times, you know, I was always trying to be around you, trying to get to know you, because literally the only person I had there was Rob. So I think at some point you finally just got tired of me and said, man, I'll find, I'll just hang out with this kid if he'll stop annoying me. And then I feel like we just have been friends ever since. Yeah, man, you were, you were one of the first people to approach me and, you know what I'm saying, show your kindness. Yeah. And um, I'm not the type of person – to even though I'm an athlete, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not the type of person to go and start, you know what I'm saying, conversations or mm -hmm. I've always been just observant and laid back. So when I get into a situation, I'll look around and try to observe everything going on first. So when I first got up there, that's the mode I was in. I was just observing, observing the kind of people, observing the atmosphere. And then here comes this redhead kid up in the corner <laughs> of my house, I'm like, what's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> definitely no i annoyed this man so rj in your first year dude i gotta say for your first year back in almost what four years since playing on a diamond 229 batting average that's actually magnificent for you know what you you know being gone as long as you have been and then your on base percentage at 372 man you could just get on base and not only that but once you got on base it was like oh speed factors in play you know i'm sitting up in the booth i'm like He's going. Like, he's gone. Like, you, you're not going to throw this guy out. Like, it's impossible to throw this guy out, it feels like. So, RJ, let me ask you this, man. So, you took the year off from baseball or from basketball this past year. 
you're getting ready to go back into the two sports. How hard is training for two sports at one time for you, being a collegiate uh, athlete? Man, it's definitely a whole different world. You know what I'm saying? You'll see those guys who are focused and keened in on their one sport and how much work they put in, and it looks like they're just tiring themselves out every day with the one sport. So adding on another one to that with totally different movements and ways that you mm -hmm. move about the game is definitely difficult, but I've been making it. <laughs> now – Talk about your JUCO basketball career, because I, I know I know a little bit, but like, what was the experience from high school basketball to JUCO? What was that trans trans uh, transition like? You know, I talked to Tyler Rogers, and you know, his JUCO might have been different than yours. He said JUCO for him was just glorified high school basketball. What was the transition like for you? Well, for me, coming out of high school, uh, my father was actually my high school basketball coach. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? I had that pressure on me 24-7, but we had a pretty good program, and we made the state, uh, state tournament a couple of times. So coming from that, I was a highly regarded player coming out of high school and decided to stay local with the school and uh, chose Columbia State, which is in Columbia, Tennessee, uh, up near Nashville. Once I got there, there was, you know what I'm saying? There's always going to be that jump from levels mm -hmm. when you get there. But as far as, like, knowing what I had to do and things like that, I think high school prepared me very well because my uh, my dad was a former collegiate coach. So mm -hmm. he had our program set up to where we were doing things and he was getting us college ready. Yeah. So, yeah, my JUCO was very disciplined, very hardworking. The type of program we had, man, it was cutthroat. Like – uh. I mentioned my knee injury earlier that happened in practice during a defensive drill, a toughness drill, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it was very intense, but it was worth it in my opinion. So for you, you know, you talked about your dad being a coach. My dad coached me up until I think I got into high school. And I think the year before I went into high school would have been my eighth grade year. I looked at my dad in the face and I said, I'm done playing for you. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I was wondering how long it was going to take. Like, <laughs> yeah. so, but for you, you know, your dad, you said he coached collegiately. Where did he coach collegiately at before taking over your high school program? Um. So right before my high school program, he coached at Lane College, which is a division mm -hmm. two here in Jackson, Tennessee, which is how we moved from Florida up here to Tennessee. But um, he's also been the head coach at Tennessee State University, and he was the associate head coach under Dale Brown at Louisiana State University. And if you know you guys have ever heard of Shaquille O'Neal, my dad was the guy who recruited him and got. <laughs> oh him my! You know. Dang, that's – so, like, your dad just knows Shaq, like, just like that. Uh, Yeah, bro. Yeah. So, bro. basically, your dad's the reason Shaq ended up at LSU kind of thing? Yeah. He was the guy who recruited oh, yeah. Shaq and, and got him to come there. That's that's crazy, man. I can't even imagine. Yeah, my dad just recruited Shaq. No big deal. Like, what? <laughs> you act so subtle about that, man. I'd be like, yo. <laughs> yeah, man. It's something that's I it. do now. Yeah, that's that's insane, man. That's insane. I just can't even fathom that. So what was I mean, you know, I've spent a lot of time away from home. I've been I've lived in California, which was 13 hours, lived in Arizona, which was 10, 11. And then now, obviously, New Mexico is like nine. This is the closest I've been to home by five hours since I left, <laughs> literally. Um for you, it was what fifteen hours to New Mexico for you. For uh, yeah, that's what the Google said. Google said fifteen, but it was more like seventeen or eighteen. <laughs> so back lies, there, um, real life stuff, <laughs> traffic, people getting in accidents, stuff like that. Yeah. So what was for you? Obviously, you'd been kind of away, but you weren't really away. You know, being in Columbia or being at Columbia State. What was the transition for you like being that far from home? Like how hard was that transition? Um, it was definitely a hard transition because it was the furthest I had been from home and for the longest period of time. Mm -hmm. Because at least when I was uh, in college here in Tennessee, I could take the drive and mm -hmm. go spend weekends and things like that. But um, moving out there to New Mexico, man, like everything had to be a phone conversation. I couldn't yeah. go visit people a couple hours away, 
But um, yeah, I had to definitely get used to not having the people I'm used to being able to show up for me right there. Mm. You know, and I feel like that was like one of my first things that when I got to Highlands, because yeah, I had spent the time away from home. I, I had made friends in California and Arizona, but, you know, I never had really spent a whole semester at one place. You know, I'd moved around so much. So, yeah, I had Rob as a friend there. And Rob, I know you'll watch this. I love you dearly, buddy. But it was like, I got to have somebody outside of my roommates as friends. And Dave, obviously, as well. You know, I had to have somebody outside of my roommates as friends. So, you know, I feel like once I made that connection with you and, you know, I realized I probably annoy this guy, but at least he's talking to me kind of thing. Like it was really it, our friendship really. I mean, we had, you know, we don't have to tell the story of how we, I feel like we became really good friends because, you know, we just don't need to tell that. And I know, you know what I'm talking about, yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> but you know, it was, you know, that was when I really realized I was like, all right, this guy is like truly my friend. Like I can truly hang out with this guy a lot. And, you know, you've come over for everything, Super Bowl, football playoffs. I mean, and, you know, just our friendship is truly unique, and I'm really glad I have it. That's for sure. So, RJ, obviously, you know, there's things, you know, we're going to have a new head coach next year at Highlands. Should we both come back? Obviously, we're both kind of in the portal exploring our options. We don't know what's going to happen right now for you picking a school in the portal, whether it's Highlands, whether it's anywhere in the nation, what is like, do you want to play both sports in college or do you want to focus, go back to focusing on hoops? Like what is your mindset right now? Um, as far as my mindset goes, it's kind of a childish viewpoint. Cause you know, as a kid, like they tell you to do everything you can mm -hmm. while you can, you know what I'm saying? So in that view, I'm just looking at it as, you know what I'm saying? If I have the opportunity to play two sports in college before the end of my collegiate career, I think that would be great because it was two sports I grew up playing and loving and still have a, a love and passion for today. So yeah. if I have the opportunity to play both, I would definitely take it. No, I mean, I don't think that's childish at all. I mean, I played three to four sports growing up. I mean, really how you look at it, I played football, basketball, baseball, and then little bit of men's volleyball towards the end of my high school career, uh, high school career. So I've played a lot of sports, you know, and every sport is different, like you were saying earlier. But, you know, you guys can go look up this guy basketball wise. When I first saw this guy play, I couldn't believe it. Like, I mean, this man, you know, he brings the ball up like, all right, whatever. And then he drives, spins midair, and throws it off the glass. I'm like, what is this guy doing? And I felt like Amon Shumpert in that Kobe interview. What is this guy on? I'm like, bro, you've been regular the whole time I've known you. <laughs> he pulling up in the corner, turning around. I'm like, who is this guy, Steph? Like, bro. But let me ask you this. And I think, you know, I know I have my idea of who. But who do you compare yourself to? in the league in in basketball like who do you look up to who did you model your game after who'd you look up to um well we've came up through kind of two different eras of basketball so i say like the earlier version of who i was modeling myself after would probably be Dwayne wade mm -hmm. in miami and then as i kind of got you know what i'm saying the fundamentals down and got more skilled in basketball and could kind of create my own persona I started to take after guys like Steph Curry and Kyrie Irving because yeah. we're kind of the same build, same height, you know what I'm saying, same quickness. Mm -hmm. But I just love the way that they play too and the way that yeah. they move with and without the ball. So those are the guys I hooked on to earlier. Yeah, I definitely could agree with Kyrie. I mean, just the way you guys are so quick. But the other factor that you have, I feel like that, like, I don't know if it's – I mean, you're what, 6'2", 6'3"? 6'2", yeah. 6'2", but you play like you're 6'4", six, 6'5", six, like you're driving on dudes. Like, I remember this guy hits a layup off of – a. he was a redshirt basketball player, definitely a center. This man drives Euros and lays it in and then turns around and looks at me like, is this guy even guarding me? I'm like, <laughs> the man is like 6'8", bro. Like, what do you mean is he even guarding you? Like, you just drove past him like he wasn't even there. I mean, this guy is – I mean – yeah, on the baseball field, like, 
man, you are amazing to watch, you know, coming off of four years not playing. You didn't make a whole lot of errors. I mean, everybody makes errors, but, like, you didn't make a lot, you know. And, I mean, I remember this one. I love this. We're playing Adam State. You remember this. <laughs> yes, sir. We get a guy. We get a, a big guy, Bryant, right? He hit the single. He was at first. And Bryant isn't the fastest guy in the world. And Bryant will agree with me. He might yell at me if he ever sees this for saying that. <laughs> but it's true. It's true stuff, man. Like, this is true talk. And I'm sitting there going, we got to put RJ on. Like, I'm, I'm in the booth. You know, I have the heads. I didn't have the headset at this point. Our broadcast was muted. Like, we got to put RJ at first. Like, what are we doing? You know? Well, Brian gets moved up to second on, like, a sack bun or something. And all of a sudden, I just see you in the dugout warming up your legs. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. Get him in there. And I see him come jogging out. And I literally tell everybody in the booth, I'm pretty sure. No, Rob was not up there. Somebody up there can vouch for this. We'll find somebody. I go, it's over. <laughs> and I said, they're like, what? I said, it's over. I said, any ball hit, RJ's scoring. Like, there is no doubt in my mind. It could be right at somebody, RJ's going to score. Like, and, you know, then Joe knocks the ball through the left side. Kind of, They kind of kick it, and you score. And, I mean, that video, I wish I had that video pulled up right now because I'd pull it up and show it. I beat this man to the party, and I was in the booth. <laughs> okay. hey, believe it or not, I was showing my friends the video the other day, man. You know I had to make the sound effect. I was like, watch this. Here I come. You <laughs> You just see this, like, it's not even like, I think I was wearing my black hoodie. It's not even a, like, black streak across. It's just the red hair. You just see it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> out there running like a red version of it. <laughs> running out there like a freaking red version of Sonic the Hedgehog. I was gone. <laughs> It's like 99 yards to the house. <laughs> Man, you made it but there quick. <laughs> I did make it there quick. So, RJ, in your first year back, man, what was, in your opinion, other than that lovely moment we just talked about, what was your favorite part of being back on the diamond? And you can go anything in the clubhouse to the to off the field with the guys, like anything in your opinion. I would have to say – Probably my favorite thing about being back on the diamond is the camaraderie between the teammates. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been on yeah. um, multiple basketball teams, multiple baseball teams. They're different worlds. They're two, you know what I'm saying? They're two different mm -hmm. sports. And the people that play them have two different ways and personalities of uh, going about life. So uh, I would just say that I appreciate the way that we were able to come together, even in you know what I'm saying? The darkest of times, we were there for each other. Yep. How many people can really say that? No. I mean, it was, uh, you know, for those of you that look up the New Mexico Highlands Cowboys after this, it was a rough year. It definitely was. And I feel like towards the end of the year, it got even rougher. But here we are, you know, we'll we'll see kind of what happens. Um, But you know what, RJ? I want to pick your brain, man. Let's talk a little basketball. Well, NBA Finals, and obviously, I know you were watching. We had talked, obviously, a little bit before this. I didn't just randomly hit RJ up and say, hey, get on the podcast. We talked yesterday a little bit about stuff, and then today we did. We kind of worked this out. Right. Um. Yo, Jokic had, I think it was 31, 20, and 11. And Jamal Murray had 34, 10, and 10. Hey. Outside of the headliners, you know, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Kyle Lowry on Miami, and then you got Jokic and Murray, and then obviously Michael Porter Jr. on the Nuggets. Outside of those guys, who do you think is going to be the biggest key factor for a team to win this series on both sides? Well, I'll put it this way. If you've looked at the rosters of both teams in the finals, you'll notice that the Heat have a multitude of players who were undrafted. Mm -hmm. So as far as like that tenacity and the. I think we lost him. Oh, we good. You might. Yeah. You might be coming yeah, back. I think Hold this, okay, yeah. I think are. this shows how, um, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to be that number one top draft yeah. pick. As long as you got the heart and you got the, you know what I'm saying? The will to go out there and put the work in. You can get it done. You could get where you need to be. But 
Uh, personally, I feel like the difference maker, aside from all the big names, is probably going to be one of those undrafted players like Duncan Robinson or um, mm-hmm. who else is undrafted for uh, Max Struess. Uh, yeah. Who else? Uh, yeah, they got they got a couple yeah. of guys that you know what I'm saying. Gabe Vincent. They weren't they weren't lottery picks. They weren't highly you know what yeah. I'm saying, thought after. Yeah, coming into the league, they had to work their way up, and I feel like coming from a place where, you know what I'm saying, you see more of that tenacity because it's a means of making it out more than just, you know what I'm saying, having something to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? those it, it was life or death for most of those guys while the people on the Denver side of it, you know what I'm saying, they've been sitting getting their yeah. checks, they didn't sign their contract, they didn't have it. They didn't have it set out. And, like, yeah. I'll say that as far as, like, even going back, I didn't know who Gabe Vincent was before these playoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know who Caleb Martin was. But on the other hand, I knew who Jamal Murray was. We talked about yep. my father being an LSU coach. So when uh, I was a kid here in Tennessee, they always hosted the SET tournament in mm-hmm. um, Bridgestone Arena, which is where the Predators play in Nashville. Yep. So me and my dad would always go see the tournaments. And I remember going to one of those tournament games and Jamal Murray this year that he was at Kentucky hit a buzzer beater to actually send him to the yep. conference championship. So, you know what I'm saying? Just seeing like his journey throughout all of that, he's always been at the top of the list. Yeah. But he's, you know what I'm saying? He's got these guys up against them now that are just basically showing up out of nowhere. Yeah. And, you know, Michael Porter Jr. Also, you know, he was a Missouri right. guy. Right. You know, he had had a lot of injury concerns and, you know, and then you got, I mean, really the only guy that, I mean, yeah, he was drafted, but it was kind of like, they drafted him, and everybody's like, who is this? Jokic. I mean, right. drafted in 2014. <laughs> I remember watching. The Taco Bell commercial. Yeah, I remember watching that draft because the year before, I believe the Nuggets drafted a guy that was – he was born in America, but he went and played overseas in China. I think his last name was – it wasn't Jamal Murray, but it was like something Murray. Like his last name was Murray. I remember that. Mm. I think he's with the Knicks now. I don't even know. And – he was kind of a bust and everybody was super hyped about him. And Denver took him at eight. And, you know, I remember watching it and I'm sitting there. I'm like, I can't even say his first or last name, but he's out of Serbia. I'm like, Oh, great. Here we go. Another un, you know, another international bust draft player. I'm eating my words now because of that. Um, <laughs> that yes, guy, I mean, you are, brother. Yes, you are. I mean, he, he drops a triple double. I feel like, Every game. <laughs> I saw I saw some stat. Um he has two more 30 point 20 rebound triple doubles in the playoffs than Wilt and Kareem. Kareem, yeah. I was gonna say it was a Laker, but I can't remember which one. It was yeah. Wilt and, and Kareem, yep. And there was some other stat that I saw, and he was like first on the all or not it wasn't like all time, but he had a he had beat like he had scored more than MJ had in his first finals appearance or something like that. I don't know. It was something something crazy like that. Like, I mean, you think of MJ, you think of pretty much the the argument we won't even get into of who the best player in the, you know, basketball universe is because if we're going titles, then you go Bill Russell if you're going, like, right. the magnitude of, like, what they've yeah, done. You, you've heard my take on this. Oh my heard. gosh! Like I was, I remember sitting in, we were sitting in this pizza joint back in Vegas, and you know, a boy Rob, you know, had his opinion, and I just hear RJ start going, and I'm like, like I was, I felt like a guy at a tennis match. Like, I mean, you know, he had a point, you had a counter. It was just, you know, it's one of those good like arguments that you can have. All right. So RJ, let's talk um, a little bit of football now. I like to pick your brain in sports. Your Tampa Bay Bucks obviously had a rough end of the year. Then you lose probably what I would consider the greatest quarterback of all time. And people will attack me for saying that. I do not care. But, you know, what do you want to see from Tampa? They're kind of in a toss-up between Kyle Trask and Baker Mayfield. Who would you want to see under center week one for Tampa? To be honest, who I want to see, 
will probably be Baker Mayfield. But then again, that's because of the just everything you see. He's been mm-hmm. the guy that's at the top of the list. He's known, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This other guy, he's having to come in and prove himself. So yep. I feel like if we do see him, he did prove what he needed to prove. Yep. And we'll be able to, you know what I'm saying, work with him going into the future. Yeah, I mean, Kyle Trask came out of Florida. He was an SEC guy. You know, everybody, they drafted him, I want to say, third round of the COVID years during, you know, the whole – that whole – weird draft that they had roger goodell was doing it in his basement (laughs) i remember they draft him and i go what are they doing like they got brady for at least three more years and you know it was kind of it was kind of one of those things you're like that's weird but you know and then they went and signed baker and i'm a baker fan i other than the fact he played at ou because i can't stand oklahoma (laughs) I'm I'm a Baker guy. Like, you know, obviously nobody liked the fact that he went and planted the flag on the O at Ohio State, but those of people that don't know, you know, what Baker Mayfield went through, you know, he went to Texas Tech. You know, he was told he was too small to play quarterback. Then he goes to Texas Tech and he's there under Mike Leach, and then Mike Leach leaves and takes the job at Washington State. And obviously Washington State goes on to do whatever the crap that was they did you know <laughs> not like they uh you know colorado had the eighth best defense in the nation we had held teams to under 200 passing yards they go and throw for 450 i'm like oh, okay because that's normal we beat them <laughs> we beat them but Gardner Minshew really upset me mm-hmm. so you know baker has been through you know then he goes to oklahoma he's not really known he beats texas he beats he wins the Big 12. He beats Ohio State. Then, you know, obviously he never made it to the national championship. But then he goes and wins the Heisman, and people are like, yo, this guy kind of came out of nowhere. And now he's talked about being the number one overall pick. He goes over one overall. He struggles in Cleveland his first few years. They didn't have anything in Cleveland. They're Cleveland, for crying out loud. Yeah. Baker Mayfield took that Cleveland team to the playoffs. And I think all they had was Nick Chubb and a bag of Doritos. Like literally. <laughs> I mean, they had might have had a couple receivers, but they had Nick Chubb and a bag of Doritos. We're going to the playoffs. Like what? Right. So I feel like Baker's been there, done that. And he's got a good, you know, his OC now is um who's the OC in Tampa? I can't even remember. Uh, the OC there has been under the same coaching tree that Baker Mayfield's came through in terms of Sean McVay, Cliff Kingsbury at Texas Tech there for a little bit, and then Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma. They all come from that same coaching tree. So I feel like um, Baker, in my opinion as well, would be the best because he's been there, done that. But if Kyle Trask proves that he can do it, then Kyle Trask has proven he can do it. All right. So, RJ, we're coming up on about almost out of time here. But, you know, we're going to do a few rapid-fire questions. All right, cool. Hit me. No, I don't have them up, so hold on. Let me pull them up. <laughs> RJ, go ahead. You know, if you want to, it's totally up to you. I know some guys don't. But if you want to give yourself a shout-out on the social media, they can follow you on the socials. Go ahead. it will be in the description on YouTube. And on the description in uh, SoundCloud. So this will be on SoundCloud and YouTube. So go ahead and give a shout out if you want. If not, no worries. I'm pulling up the questions right now. Yeah, man. You know how I am about socials. <laughs> yeah. This man is never on his social media. Like, if he posts on social media, I'm like, hold up. And when he does, it's like 40 things. Like, swear. It's like, <laughs> holy cow. All right, RJ. Ready? Yeah, bro. Hit me. What's your jersey number in both sports and why? My jersey number in both sports for basketball is two. Um, and for baseball, it's 14. Two is because basketball was always me and my dad's thing, and I'm actually a junior. So it's basically just um, that was my and his thing. That's the way I show my appreciation for him coaching me through. And um, 14 is actually the day of my birthday. So. I wanted to get number two for baseball, but uh, it was taken. So two is my actual number, but 
14 would be my secondary. And two, the nickname Deuce comes from the number two as well. Right. All that has so, to do with me being a junior and having the same name as my father. Yeah. And, you know, RJ, the thing about this, I'm going to tell you this, mixing numbers in two different sports is bad juju. I'm just letting you know. Hey, bro, trust me. I tried to get it, but hey. <laughs> hey, that meant, that meant you had the good juju going with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, who did you look up to growing up, and is it still the same person today? Um, I definitely looked up to my dad growing up, and it is still the same person, but um, I would say that, well, I'll put it this way. When I was born, my dad was 50. Mm. So we kind of have a generational gap between us. Yeah. So what I can say is that that gap kind of where I didn't have that middle-aged man to kind of mentor me and things, him being the type of mentor he is, he mentored young men who ended up mentoring me and the things that, you know what I'm saying, we couldn't yeah. connect on in our generational gap. So I would say, like, he's definitely my role model for that. But it's it's under a broad horizon. It isn't just just him and me. Yeah. What is your favorite time of day? Morning, midday, evening? Man, I say morning. If you get up early, yeah. bro, it seems like you just got a lot more time. You ain't got to mm -hmm. feel like you're rushing, bro. You, you can get things done and not have to worry about squeezing everything in. Yeah. Um, favorite style music as well as artist? Favorite style of music? Oh, man, you're going to get me, bro, because it's pretty controversial right now, but I'm going to say it, man. Um, my favorite artist right now is Gunna. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know you're a big Gunna guy. I have this man's playlist on my phone, and I swear every song is Gunna, Gunna, Gunna. What do say? I don't care what you say, bro. <laughs> um, is there, like, a certain cause in your mind, like, you know, I know right now ALS is something being big talked about. We just got out of um, mental health awareness month. Is there like a cause that you think is important that you want to like just mention on here that people should pay more attention to? Um, what did you say? Mental health. I think, yeah, I think that's definitely one to start paying attention to, but more specifically men's mental health. Yeah. And, yeah, a, and aside from men's mental health, especially athletes, mental health. Yeah. Because, of course, we're seen as the outside world, as the guys, you know what I'm saying, put the jerseys on and we have the spotlight on us and we should just be happy to do what we're doing yeah. and be where we at, you know what I'm saying? The, but most people don't realize that it, it is very, it's very, it takes a toll on you mentally. Yeah, and, you know, I wear this bracelet every day, the Helensky Hope Foundation, um, in honor of Ryan Helensky, uh, who was a quarterback at Washington State. Um, so men's mental health, I can agree with that. Okay, a couple more, and then we'll get you out of here, man. Uh, if you could have a dinner with any celebrity or athlete, who would it be and why? If I could have a dinner with any celebrity or athlete. Hmm. To be honest, at this point in my life, I would probably take a dinner with Kyrie Irving or Steph Curry. Okay. But that's on the basketball side. On the baseball mm -hmm. side, oh, I would okay. definitely I would definitely need a dinner with Jeter. Oh, yeah, I can respect that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. that. I like that. That was the guy. That was the guy growing up, man. Yeah. You know, and this might I, I didn't even mention this earlier. I just thought of this. I was trying to think of a comparison for you on the baseball field. And, you know, your swag, your speed, your style, your play. You know who Jazz Chisholm is of the Miami Marlins? That's who I see you like as. Basement Jazz Chisholm. Yeah. I don't know why, but, like, it's just, like, your speed, your swag, your style. Like, it's just, like, man, this guy just plays like Jazz Chisholm out there. Like, this man is just having fun. He's smiling all the time. You know, always doing something. Like, I don't know. Just Jazz Chisholm is who I thought of. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, secret talent that you have that people don't know about? I think I know it, but. Um, secret talent. Let's see, I have a couple of secret talents, mm -hmm. man. Um, but the one that I probably give that I know you know for sure is, uh, I, I think I can sing pretty well. Yeah, I think opinion. you can. 
<laughs> I think you can. I mean, this man made me stand up on a stage and sing a high school musical just to get him to sing his own song, which I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad I got up there. I'm not going to lie. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I'm glad I got up there and sang. It wasn't great. Yeah, man. Do not nominate me for any yeah. singing award. <laughs> um, all right. A couple more. Gatorade or Powerade? Gatorade. Gatorade. Top three movies of all time, in your opinion. Ooh, yeah, you can do you can do if you want to do a genre, what's your favorite type of genre, and then the top three in there. Well, I'll say I do watch a lot of movies, so why don't you give me a genre and I'll, I'll... give you a genre. Okay, let's go let's go sports. Sport. Like just yeah, sports movies. And it's not a genre, but it's a topic. Right. Ah, all right, because they're they, man. There are plenty of sports movies. Mm-hmm. But I would probably say remember the Titans. Okay. As far as like how how hard hitting it is. Mm -hmm. And then that was kind of, you know what I'm saying, based in um, the region of the country that I live in too. So it was a yeah. lot of off off the field, off the court aspects that I could really relate to too. Yep. Though it was in a time period way before me, there were, yeah, it was. No doubt. Yeah. So remember the Titans. Yeah, that would probably be the most like inspirational one. As far as like just the best story. Hmm. I don't know, man. You got you got me on that one. <laughs> you got me on that one. One that I, I would say pops up in my mind right now is a uh, white man can't jump. Oh so, yeah. You know, the new one just came the out. The new one just came out, movie. Jack Harlow. Yeah, man. I gotta watch that. I haven't watched it yet. I gotta yeah, watch that. Watch really it. Big. Watch it. Watch it. Okay. Bro. That might be what I do tonight. I got time. I think that's might <laughs> be what I do tonight. <laughs> All right. A couple more, buddy. I promise. Um, you know, is there like a show that you're binging right now that you want to tell the people to watch? Um, let me or, think. You sure. know, like a movie that you've recently watched, other than White Men Can't Jump, that you're like, yo, watch this. I will say this. It, it might be kind of embarrassing to say, but I had no idea there was a Grown Ups 2. Oh, yeah. I had no idea. I just no idea. It day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time, I was like, yo, are you serious? Why I did mean, nobody man, tell me? Yo, I mean, you know this. I binged all nine Fast and Furious, and then we watched the 10th one. Have you seen the 10th one? Yeah, I did go to see it, man. Mm, I was so angry about that ending. It's you getting no idea. You, there's no way you leave it like that. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, there's got to be. An, I mean, they've already announced the 11th is coming out. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was like, I like literally sat there in my chair, like, bro, what? <laughs> there's no way you defy physics with CGI like that and then just leave us like that, bro. Exactly. <laughs> that was messed up. And then like the end. I mean, obviously we don't want to give too much away, but right. I think you and I both know what I'm saying. She's alive, like, bro. <laughs> we're gonna have to talk about that off a uh off the screen here yeah so, man. <laughs> oh my gosh all right man uh any last words you got i mean anything you want to say anybody you want to shout out to whatever uh man no just glad i could help you out be here to do this for you i was excited to come on man glad you gave me the opportunity to do it man heck yeah man you know i, I was like man i gotta get this guy on as soon as i possibly can and you know, you called me yesterday and we talked and I was like, yeah, let's get this going. Let's get this done. Right. Let's get this. Let's get him on there already. So, hey, man, RJ, I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate you coming on, man. Um, obviously, you and I'll talk, but to everybody else, we're going to start having more episodes. Probably I'm going to try to do two a week. The next one will be coming out probably on Sunday. So stay tuned. Um, check me out on Instagram. Don't forget Jace Hinton, CO, Co. Um, Jace Hinton Co. on there. It says Jace Hinton 28 on there, but read the ticker tape. It's the right one. So for now, we'll see you all next time on Hammer Time. We appreciate you. Deuce, thank you, brother. Yes, sir. See y'all later.